Thanksgiving, everyone. I am in trouble. I'm in bad trouble. Uh, I gave my word I would be at somebody's house like at 6 a.m. And I couldn't make it because I was up all night because I'm on these antibiotics and it makes my heart race or something. I don't know. It makes me anxious. It's, it's like I can feel it working or something. Sounds like I got a flat tire. I listen to sounds in my car. So I'm supposed to bring the Hawaiian rolls and crackers. I know one thing, I'm tired of tacos. Ugh. So I am running very late. I didn't go to bed till 4 a.m. I even texted everybody, let them know that I was still up. Yeah, I texted them Happy Thanksgiving. So, I slept from four, six, seven, eight. I slept four hours. Okay. You gotta have your energy when you set your mind to working on the lamb plantation. Yeah. Yeah, so, he did give me this coffee cup. So, I got it. I called Food Line to make sure that they're open, and they are. So, I just t I took a shower that when I went to the clinic, and I knew if I took a shower this morning, I would be delayed another half hour. So. I did one of those sink washes, you know. I don't start smelling until like the third day, okay? So, I think I'm good for a couple hours. Okay. Oh, my God. My head is hurting. So, she told me to get some Sudafed. And I remember those little red pills. I remember those red pills. I used to take them a lot when I was living in Wintergreen. We had black mold, and I didn't know it, and I would be popping those things. Oh, my God. Is it going to rain on Thanksgiving? All right. Hey, everyone. For the love of God, I was walking into Food Line, and I go, oh, please have the Hawaiian rolls. Because he says he's not going to enjoy his Thanksgiving dinner unless it's Hawaiian rolls. So I'm walking around the store like a crazy June bug. Here we go. Oh my God, I was so happy so I don't have to run all over Fredericksburg. Also, he wanted crackers and I got him my favorite and then I got regular Triscuits. But this, if you haven't tried this rosemary olive oil, try it. I'm on a back road that nobody's on so don't worry about my drive. I can drive this blindfolded. Okay, so I think I should get this coat off because it's hot as hell. I can't get the coat off. It's like 80 degrees out here on Thanksgiving. Oh, Jesus. Ah. Watch somebody come up behind me saying, what is that old lady doing? What is that old lady doing in the car? So I stopped by and saw Connie and JJ and I gave them each a paper white because I gave away one of their flowers that they were nursing and I promised her to give her some fun to grow. So I got the AC on people. Now I got a 35 minute drive. Ah, yeah. My doctor told me not to take the Sudafed before I went to bed because this is the high power stuff you have to get behind the counter at the pharmacy. So I didn't take it. So I took it this morning. But I have to take my antibiotic at 3.30 in the morning because when I started it, it's like every 12 hours, I took it at 8 o'clock. So I have to like do it. Oh my God. I just realized, baby, I don't know. This is twice a day. So, 
for some reason it's in my mind to take it at 3.30 a.m. and 3.30 p.m. I don't know. No matter which way I did it, it wouldn't have been good. Okay. Hello again. I just got off a FaceTime with my daughter. She's laying in the bed with a whiskey hangover. That's one of the worst, right? I said, I hope you drank a whole lot of water and kept some aspirins by your bed. She looks rough this morning. She was giving me some helpful hints about how to deal with her dad, which is my ex-husband, okay? She said, every time he acts up just to text her, I go, oh, no, God, he's going to be mad that you don't do that. She goes, Mom, don't you remember? All the Thanksgiving, we'd go in the pool house with my brother and his wife and they'd be in their pool house giggling because they were drinking up all the booze in the pool house so so she said if he gets bossy and demanding all of a sudden say you got diarrhea or that you have to go you have to go to the bathroom <laughs> you know come to think of it my daughter has did that to me the last time she was at my house she, oh my God, she did the same thing to me. They go, she keeps saying she has diarrhea. I said, we need to take it to the freaking doctor. <laughs> it's because she was probably going in the bathroom taking shots. You know what? I'm. Oh my God, she's telling on herself, people. Oh my God. So she has a friend that's in the big house or the little house. The little house is the jail. Jail's 12 months or under, then you go to the jail. I, uh, she has a friend that's in jail, so she's sending him a commissary pack. And I told her, I said, there are a lot of YouTube videos of felons who, who have started doing YouTube videos about gourmet commissary food, you know, like with the ramen noodles and stuff. She says, oh, mom, you're just like, I'm, I'm your daughter for sure, because she watches them. Uh, so I'm taking the back way in. So, yeah. So she, if you want to have a good time, my daughter is the party animal. Everything she does is funny. And, and I've actually laughed so much that it hurts my heart. Yes, it hurts my heart. And she gets a little clingy and possessive with guys. You can't, guys don't like that. They want to fight for you. They want to like go after you. They, you know, don't make yourself as what is that guy's name? Harvey, Steve Harvey. He said, "Don't give him the cookie too soon." God, this is a dangerous road. Ah, I have to go really slow. Uh, yeah. If a guy really wants you, he's going to come after you. But you know, then, then there's a fine line with the stalkers. Like, if you want to do something, if you want to have somebody in your life, you need to go after them. Which means you do something nice for them. Somebody, I did something nice for somebody last year. I'm not going to name names. And he's been wonderful ever since I was nice to him. Guys have got this ego thing where they don't want to be the one that gives in first. So that they, you have to be the one that reaches out to them. Uh, so I had this crush on this guy like four years ago when I first moved to my to the beach, and I left a pineapple upside down cake in front of his door. Well, honey, I ain't got been able to get rid of him since. No, every two months he'll like call me but I don't answer you know so if the guy really really wants you he, he's going to be there all the time not just every two months so you know so there you go so, so I got in trouble the other day on some video I did at, at my ex's where I used to live too uh, he says I like my privacy well I don't know which video it is because I try to keep him out of the picture I don't know, because I, I know he's very private. My son's very private. Yeah. 
I didn't realize it, but I'm very private at certain times of my life when I didn't want anybody to know what was going on. Yeah. So, my daughter's talking about my father's secret ingredient. He was like the soup Nazi. The soup Nazi. He would dole out that soup as if it was liquid gold because it tasted that good. Now, y'all want to guess what a secret ingredient was? Because my daughter just reminded me this morning. It's sweat. Because he was six four and a half, sometimes his waist was 54 inches. I mean, he was a big man. When he walked into a room, honey, all his brothers and him were all like that. When he makes a soup, because... They didn't really have good central air conditioning or anything. It was an old farmhouse. That's why I love old farmhouses. It feels like home. So he's fixing the soup and he's got his head over the soup pot, stirring it and adding in the stuff. And the sweat is coming down to his chin and dropping in the soup. This is true story, people. I, I'm not exaggerating one bit here. Uh, my father's mother was uh, Cherokee. Uh, I think that's where I get my high cheekbones. I don't know. Ah, uh, yeah. My mother and daddy would fight over who cooked what, because if they got a, if they, they didn't ever have to elicit, uh, you know, opinions. We all gave it. We all gave our opinions of the meal. So. If they got a compliment at the table, they would both chime in. Yeah, I made that. I made that. And then they'd get in a fight. Hugo, you know I made that. You're following my recipe. Uh, you know, this, it was hilarious. So I got to cross this dangerous intersection. Here we go. Okay. So to anybody watching this who has not talked to a member of your family or even your mother or sister or dad or uncle you will be filled with so much regret if you don't reach out to them and I know y'all have heard of the BGs there's just one BG left and he said but when both of his brothers died he was not on good terms with them and he was crying on when he was being interviewed. He was crying because he has to live with that. This is what I'm trying to tell you people. I have, My favorite uncle is not doing well and I called him about six months ago because I can tell if someone's not going to live very long. I know that's awful to say, but I can. So I did call him and I let him know how much he meant to me and to my mom. My mom was the type that always aired out her dirty laundry. And my father would get so mad. And my mother would always call this, her brother, this only, this only brother that would listen to her. All her other brothers could not give her that kind of time. But he would. And this is the uncle that let me live with him when I ran away. Actually, I just did that video about a month ago, why I ran away. You should watch that if you haven't so I'm almost at my Thanksgiving destination I'm probably violating a lot of CDC rules oh my god 